here at the river. We're in Poplar Bluff on the Black. <laughs> we had a snow about four days ago. Most of it's melted, but there's still a little tiny bit. And it actually did cause the river just to come up slightly, but it's still gin clear, bluish greenish color. Didn't affect the water clarity at all because it ain't like it was a heavy downpour. So the water clarity's still good. It's actually the river right now is the lowest I've seen it in a long time. Oh, you should have backed in. Need to back in because the canoe. Like I said, the water clarity is perfect for walleye conditions. I actually probably should have put a little bit lighter line than I got on my poles. I'm using eight pound test on two of them and 10 pound on another one. Uh, the one that I'm using for crank baits, the heavy crank baits, is 10 pound. And the other two poles got eight. It is gin clear almost. Um, this is probably one of the coldest conditions I've ever fished in a long time. I'm actually gonna wear a sock cap underneath my hat camera. And I got two pair of socks on. And I'm also got three pair of gloves with me in case when I'm pulling the anchor up and down or I touch a uh, so, you know, just the paddle gets wet or something, my hand, the gloves get wet, I got two spare pairs, that way my hands constantly stay warm. I don't think it's cold enough that it, that will bother me, but I, I like to come prepared. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'm definitely, the, you ain't gonna get fish sitting at home, like Richard Jean fishing machine says, go fishing when you can, because it's good for you. I'm kind of taking his advice on that, and uh, I just figured I ain't gonna get the trophy walleye I'm after setting at home, and it, the, the season's about the end, uh, usually by the, at the latest, the middle of March is when they, they kind of die off. February is the peak for them. Uh, during the month of February, I'm gonna start going to a different place for walleye that I'm familiar with. Uh, a little further away from my home, about an hour and a half drive. Uh, I'm gonna hit that, uh, at least two good trips of that where I can get a, show you guys a little different places. Well, I'm gonna get unlaunched here and and uh, get in the water. I'll turn back on once we get out there. And we're over here. We can get one more good cast in there. Even it has a even it has a shallow ledge that ain't so deep. But you can see where I'm talking about. It's behind your head. Someone was down here catfishing, look. You got the sticks. Right there. See where that little bowl is? The, the water goes in a circle right there. <laughs> Just, it's a real little tiny hole. Not very big. It's a little spot. I honestly need to be throwing the crankbait, not this. See, right here where it drops off. Right there. It goes from three foot deep to about 15. Oh, yeah. Monster. <sighs> yeah. Now I'm pulling it in though. I think. It's not acting like a fish. Oh, I got it. <laughs> yeah, it's not that deep right here. Now I'm going to be paddling for a while, at least till this corner. There's that kayak still laying there. <laughs> I'm 
wonder if it's any good. It'd be okay for a little black. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A real pretty spotted bass. I'd keep him. She caught him on a green three-inch twister tail with an orange jig head, quarter ounce. And uh, we're fishing for walleye, but she got this spotted bass. That's a real pretty one. Look how dark its stripe is. Wow. Good job. Where'd you get him at? Okay. Hold it up for everybody. Yeah, man. That's a really colorful one. <laughs> Awesome. Huh. You want to put it in the bucket? No? Okay. All right. Well, folks, we've only been fishing really about 10 minutes and already got our first fish. You can keep it. Yeah. Put a little water in there, about at least six or seven inches of water. That's awesome. At least we got something. We're not getting skunked. <laughs> Gives you a little faith, huh? Oh, my thing was hooked. Hook was hooked. I'm making a giant long cast. Probably risking getting hung up, but I'm going to try it. <laughs> you got too much water in there. Be careful not to get that cooler wet because my phone's in the front of it. Make sure it's recording. Does it say record? Has it got the red light on? Yeah. It's timing where it shows the time. All right, folks, I got my first walleye here. Oh, it's a big sauger again. Look at the size of this sauger, folks. That's 18 or 19 inches. That's a monster for a sauger. Oh, yeah. I'd rather have a big sauger than a small walleye. He's not hooked very good either. He's 18 inches. Oh, that is a beautiful sauger. <laughs> oh, he's hooked good enough. No, oh, maybe not. No, he's not. Wow. Look at that fat boy. Oh, we gotta measure him. That, that might go 19, 20 inches. My goodness. Wow. All right, folks, we, we went about three hours with getting a bunch of, uh, I had a lot of light ticks and I could never hook them. I had wall, one walleye come up to the top after my crankbait four foot from the canoe and I seen its white tip of the tail, but I just haven't been a, had any luck yet, finally. No, he's right at 18, I don't need to measure it. 18 inches. Still a nice walleye nonetheless. It's almost pre-spawn around here. February is when they spawn. So they're getting big and fat right now. Wow. That's nice. Alright, we'll keep him. I know he's 15 for sure. Go ahead and open the bucket. on I guess. Up at the Coliseum. Yeah it's it's pretty good float but I skip all the mediocre holes. I just fish four holes. Same four every time. A lot of them ain't worth stopping at. <laughs> 